I've been very fortunate to work with excellent people um, on the project itself um, in terms of those who, who helped me to work with me or perhaps more importantly I worked with them in managing the project um, right from the, the funding institutions to the different institutions who became involved um, and most importantly to the frontline people, to the farmers, many of whom are here, and to the, those participants, the service users, their families. You know, you've, you've made this a fantastic experience for someone like me, um, who was privileged to be involved with the, the initiative um, so far. So what, what I'm going to maybe talk you through very briefly is, uh, you know, what, what happened? What were the activities of this project? Um, over, over time. And uh, it's quite, quite challenging to try and do this in, uh, in 10 minutes, uh, to give an overview of the range of things that happen, but I, I, um, I, I will do my best and I will try to adhere to the time because we have lots of stories to tell and mine is only, is only one of them. Um, I think the thing which I want to start with is that you know many people and I was speaking to Yolo earlier on and using the term, you know, do people get it? What is social farming about? Not everyone gets it. And we try to have a, an interpretation or a, a definition of social farming, which I think is, is to us uh, correct and meaningful. And we talked about that, you know, in social farming, it's a practice in which the farm is not specialized treatment farm. Rather, it remains a typical working farm where people in need of support can benefit from participation in farm activities in a non-clinical environment. And I think that for those of us who farm, for those of us who grew up on farms, who know rural areas, you know, there's lots of mundane things. In my area, we call them the jobs which have to be done on a farm. And they're very meaningful. And they're, 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 they, they are what social farming is about and the relationships which build up about these uh, activities, normal activities on farms, um, is, 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 is what the story of social farming is about. We had a conference a year ago and Tony Bates spoke at it. And uh, Tony, I think, when he wrote on it, reflecting on the experience of social farming, he captured really well in words that, that I couldn't find what social farming is about. And he, he talked about visiting one of the farms that welcome adults with special needs and mental health uh, issues or difficulties into the family life and these people all have labels, but when they step on, on these farms, they leave their labels at the gate. And I think that, that captured in many ways the normality of, of what the social farming environment is, is, is meant to be. Um, the social farming idea is not within this region, is not within the farms in, in Cavan or Tyrone or Fermanagh or, or um, Donegal. It's, it's, a very, it's, it's, it's much more global than that, and at a European level, it's well recognised as having a value. And I just want to share with you a statement from the, uh, one of the commi committees of the uh, European Union, where they talked about social farming as being innovative, an innovative approach that brings two concepts, using farming in a multi-purpose way, and social services and healthcare at the local level. And it makes a contribution in the ambit of agricultural production to the well-being and the social integration of people with particular needs. I think that does highlight for us that you know, this social farming practice is something which is recognised at uh, a European level. And that's important to us as we think about um, how we, we, we move forward um, on the initiative. The project itself was a three-year project, and I'll get into the mechanics of it now, what it was about. Um, it, it was funded under the EU Interreg uh, 4A programme, three years, and it's due to complete the end of this month, September 2014. And three partners got together in order to facilitate getting it up and running. Uh, there was uh, ourselves in the School of Agriculture in University College Dublin, there was Queen's University Belfast, and the Leitrim Development Company. And the three of us have worked very well as partners. Um, we've we've uh, worked, I think, in a way where we've enhanced each other's um, efforts in what we've done and we've, we've worked in a very open and honest relationship um, in, in order to move this forward. And we, we were provided with a grant for the three-year period of just short of 700,000. Um, the project itself didn't come out of today. It came out of efforts which were made over the past um, almost 
uh, 13 or 14 years. And, and initially a European project which is looking at rural development policy, then it moved on to a so far project which uh, Francesco Di Jacobo and a colleague of mine, Deirdre O'Connor, were very involved in, in across Europe, across seven states in Europe, promoting social farming and networking on social farming. And then there was a community of practice group which still exists um, in Ireland. And that's, in some ways, was the platform upon which um, the social farming cross borders project happened. Um, we didn't always have the, the name social farming cross borders in case people are looking for the archives on this project. Um, we started off with a very unwieldy name. Uh, it was the Ireland, Northern Ireland Social Farming Programme, INISF. And it was somewhat meaningless, unless you really thought about uh, the players involved. And we came up with SOFAB, and just in advance of the launch of this pro project, and um, uh, Minister uh, O'Neill from the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in Northern Ireland was party to launching it, and she thought SOFAB was a fabulous name, so we, 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 we still think it is. The mission of what we're trying to do, and this is very meaningful to what today is about, is, is promoting social farming as a viable option for achieving improved quality of life for people who use health and social services, and for farm families through enhancing social inclusion and connecting farmers with their communities. And we, we took three labels into the logo, and that was, it's a new opportunity even though it's, it's not new historically. Social farming has been something which has been practiced for a long time. We don't need to evidence it works, we know it works. But it is a no, new opportunity in today's environment. It connects people, hugely important the relationships built, and ultimately it's about improving lives. So those three labels were, were chosen for a very specific purpose to try and capture what this is all about. The activities of the project, the things we've done, um, I'll explain them to you in terms of, of the, the, the main activities. We raised awareness, we tried to network of those who were interested and involved. We piloted pilot practice, which is a very high profile part of what we've done. There was training, and there's been ongoing dissemination of which this event is one. In awareness raising, very briefly, we went to multiple shows. Agricultural shows nationally, local, regional. Uh, various service workshops. So there's been a lot of effort made to get out there and to raise awareness on what social farming is about. We had presentations at relevant events. We've had lots of media coverage, radio, press, TV. We've had newsletters. I think the six newsletters so far, there's one more uh, pending. Uh, we have website, which is very active, and we have uh, Facebook and Twitter. And we've had an awful lot of one-to-one -one dialogue. And I, I you know, pay particular um, uh, you know, acknowledgement to the, the staff on the project who have, you know, been hugely involved at the front line in talking to people on a one-to-one -one basis, from the health services to agriculture, right across the dis disciplines, to family members, to community activists. So that dialogue is a really important part of awareness raising, and it was done. Networking, there's been networking events, there's been many meetings. I, I can identify eight, but I'm sure there's been more. There's been visits by people, uh, the, the network group, uh, both to uh, social farming in the Republic of Ireland and uh, across into the UK in the West Midlands area um, in April 2014. Online discussion forums, the pilot farms held open days of which collectively there was over 500 people attended the uh, nine or 10 open days which happened. Hugely important part of networking at a local level and I want to uh, identify and, and to, to say that you know, an important thing has emerged from this is that there is a proposed association of social farming, which you'll hear about later on during the course of the day. The piloting. When it came to piloting, and, and uh, I'm saying this with, with a good deal of respect to our colleagues who funded the programme, they ask very hard questions. When funders release funds, they ask hard questions. And one of the big questions was, will you have even 20 farmers interested in providing this service? Because we're not paying them for piloting. Um, the reality was we had over 140 farmers interested in expressions of interest. We then had detailed applications and farm visits to almost 60 farmers. And we, many farmers were disappointed. And that's, uh, it was hard to do, but it was nevertheless a, an attribute to the level of interest and commitment by people to become involved in this service. So we selected 20 farms, 
regionally dispersed and which we felt were possibly best placed at that time to pilot the service. Hand in hand with that was the identification of 66 people in excess of the 60 we had targeted because of levels of interest and 37 adults with special needs and 29 adults who had mental health difficulties and were in services um, were, were identified and they showed an interest. They wanted to become uh, part of this and, and we'll hear Shane's story in a moment where you know, someone from a non-farming background just had an interest in the farming experience. So matched up with uh, the clients and the farms and a, an individual support plan was developed for each service user. On average, each person, the 66, spent 24 of the 30 days. Um, that's 1,600 person days of social farming experience over the course of the project. It's a lot of experience. There's a lot of stories. Every day for each individual was an individual story, and we recognize that. The average attendance rate was 83%. People, you know, vote by their, in their interest and belief in something by, with their feet, on their feet. So there was a very, very high level of attendance. Uh, in many cases, the, the, the people visiting the farms, the users, the service users were accompanied by care worker. They traveled to and from the farms, different means. There was a lot of innovation in getting people onto the farms from their homes. The, farm, the farmers received a very modest support to some capital investment which was identified and required, and insurance packages which were a big issue from the outset, were negotiated, were identified and were resolved. Training, a hugely important part of the project. The, so the pilot farmers received eight days of training to prepare them and to equip them uh, for the delivery of the service or to support them in the delivery of the pilot service. Um, there was also a just completed 10 week training program for 61 people um, uh, who com completed it uh, in late August um, and that was, was uh, certainly uh, very positively received and evaluated by the participants. Um, and we are developing guidelines, a handbook on delivery of social farming based on the SOFAB experience. So that's all contributing to the training activity. And the dissemination, we have a website, the local shows, national conferences. We have a number of short videos produced. Some of you may be very familiar with them. Some of you here have uh, been participated in them. So you're the stars of the shows. Um, and and they, they are powerful evidence to the social farming um, project. And we've had media press and, and, and TV coverage, which is, which is ongoing. The first conference in June 2013, and my last slide is, is, is a fundamental question to those of us who have been involved, and particularly I'm, I'm talking about myself from, from one of the institutions. I'm from University College Dublin, and um, a colleague of mine, a senior colleague, when we presented social farming, uh, he said to me, and I better not identify him, he said to me, are we doing this kind of thing in agriculture? And I said, yes, we are, um, and we're delighted to be involved in it. So the initial position of the three partners, Queen's University, Roy Nelson is here, Leitrim Development Company, uh, Brian Smith is here, and UCD. You know, we got into this because we saw it as a real value to society, and it has potential to connect people and improve lives. And the experience of the service users, the providers, and the care agencies have reinforced the worthwhileness of this initiative to date and the potential it offers for new opportunities in the future. So was it worthwhile? Absolutely. I suppose really our commitment is how can we move it forward from here. So that's, that's the story, that's the overview of, of where we're about. So let's, let's hear the story more importantly from the, uh, those who have a, I suppose, more on the ground story and perspective. And, and um, Shane Lachlan is with us and Shane was uh, one of the 66 people who went out on farms uh, in the period between April of last year up to uh, May, June of this year. And, and Shane is uh, from County Cavan. Uh, as I said, he's not from a farming background, but uh, he engaged full on in the farming experience. Um, and Shane is, is you know, known to, to all of us as a, as a person who has a great willingness to help and become engaged and to advocate for, for services, for support, and for improved lives. 
So I think Shane is a very important, uh, and not only important, but the right person uh, to, uh, to, to start telling the story of social farming today. So Shane, would you come up and join us?